Hi everybody, and today we are going to be talking about F-scores. So to be precise, what an F-score is, is essentially the happy medium per between precision and recall. How well did you get all of the answers and how many of those answers did you actually get right? Now, this is something very common in machine learning and analytics across the board. This is used for identification of, you know, diseases in patients. This is used in search engine optimization. This is used for cybersecurity threat detection. This is used for supply chains. This is used for text classification. You name it. F-scores are very important. So, in general, they are there to help you understand how confident you should be in the model that you have created. How well are those predictions going to work in real life? And as a special treat, I am going to share with you how do you choose a good F-score? Oftentimes people tell me, I have some F-scores, I don't know if they're good or bad. In this video, I will briefly talk about how I review F-scores and how I deem if something is doing well or if something's doing not so well. All right, so with that, let's go get started. When you're doing machine learning, you wanna have a training set, and that could be a predefined training set, something that's trained on a massive amount of information like neural networks are. That's what BERT and things like GPT-3 are using right now. So you have to have a training set. The reason for that is because machines learn from observation, whether that's through text, voice, and images. Okay, scooshed over. So we're gonna be using this data set right here. This is a very small data set. Obviously, it's just for teaching purposes. But in a much larger data set, you are going to see much different results for all of these measures. In this example, you're going to see very similar results for each measure because it's a very small data set. So just keep that in mind. So our task for the day is to identify striped cats like this one. Okay, so what we're going to look at in this table is training set. That's what we have trained the machine on. We have given it an example and told it what it should learn from this entity. And then the machine learning prediction. That is the next piece, which is, okay, the machine has learned, just like when you're teaching children, you have to teach, they observe, they kind of figure out the characteristics. In this case, they're going to see different things with cats, and then it's going to learn from that, and then you have to test the machine, and you have to understand how well it did. So in this case, we have five cats. You can see they are all different colors. One is actually technically a tiger and they all have different markings. Okay, so in this situation, the very first thing one is a false positive where we taught the machine, this cat does not have stripes and the machine comes back and says, but I think it does based on what you've taught me. Eh -eh, not right. Okay, so thing two, three, and four are all correct. Now notice thing two and three are both stripes, has stripes, cool. Thing four is a true negative, which means we taught it that thing four does not have stripes and the machine learned, oh, this does not have stripes. Bingo, that's good. Now the next one is a false negative. So thing five does have stripes, but the machine comes back and says, well, wait a minute, I see patches on this. So I think it's really patches instead of stripes. Well, you got it wrong. All right, so again, you would try to recalibrate for that. So there are a few ways to measure how confident you can be in your model. So the very first measure is accuracy. How accurate were we? So this is the easiest one to do. It's basically just counting how often the machine got this right. So in this situation, you're going to do true positives plus true negatives, and then you're going to do all of the sum of, of everything you're looking at. So all true positives, all true negatives, all false positives, all false negatives. So what that looks like is that. So this model is 60% accurate. Now, when you're trying to decide what your minimum threshold is for what you are willing to accept with your model, 
you have to do a few tests. How many errors are you willing to accept? If you're more interested in what you got right and not necessarily what you missed, accuracy might be all you're looking for. But when you get into things with cybersecurity or supply chain or, or health um, predictions and it's a false alarm, it's not great, but you know, at least that person is healthy. Whereas if you missed somebody that did have a disease and you didn't ca and you didn't catch that and that person got very sick or something else happened, that's really bad. So that's why you have to look at each of these measures and understand what is it measuring and which one is best for you. All right, now we're getting into precision and recall. So precision and recall are used a lot in machine learning as well as search engine optimization. So if you have a good precision and recall, that means you're getting a good search result. Precision is looking at how often did the machine get it right based on what you've taught it. The way to calculate precision is true positives because that's really what you're looking at. What, pos what was the true positive, the thing that we taught it, did it actually give it back? And then you divide that by the true positive plus the false positives. And that looks like this. So here we're getting about 67% pretty good. 67 is better than 60. Mm. These are not comparative, right? You're not comparing accuracy measure to precision measure. All of these are weighting different aspects. And that's why you have to match what aspect are you measuring to your use case. So here again, you have to make sure that you are doing testing on your own data set to understand what is in the realm of possibility? Is 67 as high as you're ever going to get? Very high uh, precision. You're getting only the number one result back. If that is what your goal is, you want to make sure that you get a much higher precision. Then this is probably too low for you. But precision is probably the measure you want to use. Now let's move on to recall. It is looking at out of the things I got back, how many of them were true positives? So this is looking at, I'm, look, I'm trying to find all the cats with stripes. If I was doing a search on cats with stripes and I only got one of them, that would meet precision, but I missed two of them. So recall is trying to find out, did I get all of or the majority of the search results that I really should be getting? The way to measure that is true positives divided by true positive plus false negative. False negative is where we see with thing five, we taught it, it had stripes, and the machine said, no, this doesn't actually have stripes. So in a search application, it would say, hey, thing five doesn't need to show up in search results when somebody is looking for cats with stripes. Well, that's bad recall because it should have come back. So. How does that look? Just like this. Okay, so we've got 67%. Again, we're not comparing them all together. So this is telling me that out of all of the possibilities of correct results, I am getting about 67% of them back. It's probably not great, but it really depends on what your use case is. All right, now we are into F-score. What this is doing is it is measuring that the positives and the negatives are of equal weight. So it's, it's trying to find that, that happy medium between precision and recall, right? So if you get a ton of recall back, but they're not all precise, that means you have a, not a great search experience. If you do more precision over recall, it means you might only get one result back. So with F1, the calculation would be recall multiplied by the precision divided by recall plus precision multiplied by two. So what does that look like? Just like that. You can see that this is going to give you a better representation of what is truly possible with your model. How confident can you be? So. In another interpretation, you can look at this and say that the model is going to, in a general sense, correctly predict which cat has stripes 67% of the time. Now, in machine learning, here's a rule of thumb. 
A lot of people ask what F score you should be shooting for. And while the answer can be varied depending on your use case, a general rule of thumb is a model that is below 75%. You can fudge that a little bit going down to maybe 60. But if you go past that, you might want to start with a smaller data set. You might need to do a few calibrations for a whole nother video. But the point is, if you are getting something below 75%, you do need to probably look at it with a closer eye. Now, for comparisons, humans are about 91% correct when they are doing very similar classification tasks. It's pretty high, but humans have bad days. That's why they're not always accurate. But the consistency for a machine is 100%. So it could be 100% wrong, and that's where you have to go and recalibrate. You can at least feel confident that when you identify an issue, it's going to be 100% the same way throughout. You could train your models up to be that accurate. I have seen models that are 81%, 89%. Uh, F scores, it really depends on what you're training on, but you can get pretty close to human and that's amazing. So that's what an F1 score is. Now, how do you understand F scores for neural networks? These are very similar to an F1 score, but most of the time with a neural network, it's looking at such a high demand of information that going through and really trying to pick apart why the model went wrong here or there is just completely unreasonable. So what you do instead is when you are trying to understand how confident you can be in your model, you add more emphasis onto your use cases where if you are trying to identify tumors, if you miss a tumor, that's really bad. So if you are cautioning on the safer side in making sure that you get the highest recall, this is where you have to really understand what is the emphasis of confidence in your models? What makes the most sense for what you were working on? For classification, it's usually okay to just stop with an F1 score because if you get the wrong classification or the correct classification in search engine optimization or semantic search or something like that, it's, it's not so bad. But if you are working with someone's well-being or if you are, you know, trying to make sure that people are safe and protected, those are things that have a higher stake. When you're dealing with a neural network, you're going to be looking at F2 score. So in this example, I am waiting recall higher because I want to make sure that I get all the cats. I want all the cats with all the stripes. And if I don't get them, I'm going to be pretty upset. So in this case, I am going to do the following. I'm going to have one plus two squared, right? And then I'm going to then multiply that with recall multiplied by precision divided by one plus two squared multiplied by recall plus precision. That's accurate. Okay, and I know that was a lot, so there you go. That makes more sense. It's easier to read on the screen. It's pretty low. That tells me that the confidence I have in the model I'm using in my neural network is probably pretty low, at least if I am emphasizing recall. So I hope that you enjoyed herding cats with me today and understanding how you walk through the confidence measures that you can use for your individual models. You just have to make sure you understand what are you asking what are you emphasizing and which of these measures is going to make the most sense for you? All right. And with that, thank you very much. And I'll catch you next time.